Well, hello and welcome back. This is, uh, we're now in part six of um, the build of the Prinz Eugen. And in part six, we're going to finish off the heavy deck work. We're going to finish off putting the Art Walks wooden decks on. We're going to finish off the wooden decks with a varnish finish. And uh, we're going to glue the deck into the hull. So let's get started on that now. Well now boys and girls, uh, it's time for a look at, our first look at um, the Art Walks wooden decks. Now these are the three deck sections um, that we're working on at the moment. There's the fore deck, the after deck and this is the centre deck. And in the ship they are all flush deck, the, the ship's flush deck and they fit together I don't know if you can see this all together laid out flat like this. They fit together like that. Let me just pan this across now. Um, and almost all of the after deck and almost all of the fore deck. Pan that round so that we can see properly will be covered in Artwalk's wooden decks. The easiest one for me to demonstrate the use of these decks, I think, would be on the after deck. So let's dispose of the fore deck and the main deck in the meantime, and we'll just concentrate on the after deck. So the only parts of the after deck that you can see here which will be sticking through the wooden decks will be these boxes, hatches, vents that are shown sticking proud above the deck and the bollards here, the anchor chain uh, areas here and there's two little bits there which the, um, the, the uh, the inside stuff sticks up on. The, deck, the decks themselves, let's put that off to one side and we'll have a look at how the decks. The decks come in a large flat container like this and as you can see at the bottom here it's a stick down bit. Please excuse my, my rubber gloves but we've been handling these decks and they are clean at the moment. But it's a nightmare when we're working with these, so we'll take them off till we come back to the decks. Right, let's get it out. Now it's best to try and pull it out on the cardboard backing because that keep, well, it, it keeps everything together. Oh, I don't know what you're seeing, but I know what I'm seeing. <laughs> and. This is it, coming out. And get in here now. So we'll put that off to one side. We'll put the, the decks back in all of this afterwards when we're finished. That's just a cardboard um, marketing piece. The bit that we want is this sheet, this sheet, and a little bit of anchor chain. I've got anchor chain from several places now, so we'll, um, we'll keep it all working anyway. So, the instructions are here. Now, I'm not sure if we can get this so that you can see everything at once. And that's the small piece of anchor chain. We'll put this aside for the moment because we don't need it just now. Now, we're going to be working on the after deck section, which is this. And on the instructions, that basically is this part here. 
like that. So far as the deck itself is concerned, the wooden deck itself, it's shown as being, I'll put that there so that you can see, it's showing as, as being rather more than just the after deck. There are also two parts coming down here which fit onto the main deck. That is, they fit on the main deck down like that, in there, and then cut across and round that little mounting. So, if we were to simply work on this section, we would find parts of the deck sticking out here and we couldn't do it. So this has to wait until after we've glued in the deck section to the hull. However, here is the bow section, and the bow section fits nicely on top of its own deck there. So we can in fact demonstrate the way that these decks work very well by using the bow section, and we'll put the bow section of deck onto this, and that will demonstrate, I hope, how this works. And again, we'll just put that on top there. Now, this section of the bow has no deck on it. And if we move this off to one side, like that, which I hope you can still see, there is where the wooden deck ends, and that would go across there. This is the cutout for the anchor hose, and that's it there. That's the cutout for this section, cutout for these bollards, and these bollards also have cutouts there and there. There's a hole there, and there's a hole there, a hole there, and a hole there. Then these two anchor hoes... Excuse me, there is a message for you. <laughs> Do you like my phone? Um, the anchor chain will come down here round the capstan and there's a hole there for it and a hole in the deck and down into the chain locker and there's a cutout section there. So what we can, there's also uh, two small cutout sections here and here and there's nothing on the bow for them. But you'll remember that we removed two parts there and there because there are photo etch parts to go in and on the wooden deck there's a small cutout. I suspect that the photo etch parts will be slightly larger and we may have to enlarge that cutout when we come to the photo etch. But that's where we are just now. So let's now continue and we'll show you how to remove that from the square wooden section. And the way we do that, and I'll just put these up there out the road, we'll put the instructions up there out the road. Now just as a matter of interest, there's the instructions for the deck there. These various holes are for capstans, 40mm mountings, there's parts for the, the, showing you the, the anchor there and so on. So we'll come back to that in a moment. Now, to get this out of here we have to use our knives. So we'll get up our chopping board. And I'll take my plastic glove off. Right, we're now going to have to cut out this from here. Now, technically speaking, we don't have to. Technically speaking, the way that many people use these wooden decks is that, don't forget, we've got three layers here. We've got this surface layer, which is the wood. On the back, we've got a layer of plastic. And in between the two, we've got a layer of glue. Now many people simply get this started and remove the wooden deck from this sheet, leaving the plastic behind. And when that happens, they're relying on leaving behind these little parts here where the wood has to have holes in it. That's not the way I do it. 
The way I do it is I try and get this whole thing out first, complete, and then work on it later. And to do that, I have to get a very sharp knife and cut round the outside of this and then cut out these wee bits in the middle. That's more difficult to do, but I believe it makes it easier to work with this section later. Now, knives. I need a very sharp knife for this, so I'll get into my knife box, which is sitting up here. And the knife that you want for this, or the type of knife that you want for this, is one with a sharp point. Um, for example, there's one with a round edge. Now that's not really ideal for this. You really want one with a sharp point, and there are one or two that we could use. There's, for example, four separate knives there, all with sharp pointed blades. It really depends on which you're most comfortable with. Um, I like a reasonably long blade when I'm doing this. So that these two are the long blades and these two are the short ones. I'll put the short ones back. Now as for the long ones, this has got a narrower barrel than this one. And so this one I think is easier to use. So we'll put this one back as well. So this is the blade that I'm going to use now to remove <coughs> the deck. <coughs> I'll get into this in some detail, but when it comes to later decks, I'll just talk about them in general and won't go into such detail. Now the thing I want to do is I want to cut along these lines and I want to cut through the wooden layer, the glue layer and the plastic layer at the back so that I can take the whole thing out. You'll find when you, when you go to do this that it's actually fairly easy to do because these... Hold on, that's slack. I'll tighten that up a bit. Because these decks are laser cut. So the wooden deck themselves is, is, is mostly cut through already by the lasers. So you have, do have a channel that you can run your knife point in. And that makes it a little bit easier. So although I'm doing it freehand, I'm actually, the, the blade itself is being guided by where the cut is anyway. And you can feel when you get through. Excuse me, there is a message for you. Well, that's very, very nice of my phone to tell me that. Um, there we go. The round parts where you're trying to cut round an arc are the most difficult. But the rest of it is fairly easy. The more you do this, actually, the easier it becomes. You'll find when we try and take this out of the sheet that there will be little parts still left attached that we may have to fiddle with a bit. But you see it's coming quite nicely at the moment. Okay. Carry on working round. If any of you feel that you're, you're uncomfortable with following a straight line like that, if you have a steel ruler, you can lay it along the edge and work your way down. But I find that because there's a groove already there, it's actually, you're, you're simply following an existing groove. It is possible to wander off. There we are, see? Just did it there. And hopefully when you do wander off, you wander outside the box rather than inside the box. But it is possible to take a, take a piece which how you've maybe had a cut like that across and reassemble it so that you can't see the difference because these things will join together easily after the event. Right. I'm almost 
the whole way around that. If it, because I've got a, I'm working with a, a knife with a sharp point, it's easier to go around these arcs where it's on a curve than it would otherwise be. Now, and technically I've gone around everything there, so this should pop out. Naturally it won't, um, because there'll be little bits still still joining, but you can see whenever you, you, you just you lift it roughly like that, you can find the bits that are still there. And pop that in. Well, still a wee bit in there. Flip. Usually the parts that are left and are holding it still in place are around areas where oops, you've changed direction. For example there and there. That's what's come out nicely now. Right? It is indeed the plastic that's holding this together. piece of deck that we're going to use and you'll see that there are still some small sections that have to be removed and again using this this sharp knife we can simply pop these out we'll just do this one here for you so that you can see what I'm doing and really all you need to do is maybe get one or two of these parts out and I mean completely out, with the, with the plastic away from behind them as well. Because we're going to use these to make sure that the deck fits alright. So, give me a glove. This is the deck. This is the wood. It sits on... that now, where you've got these parts that stick through these are excellent locators so getting them out at the beginning before you do this work is, is very important because they help locate the deck very accurately as you can imagine if you didn't have these if there was nothing sticking out there and you just tried to put this on with this being so sticky you would have a nightmare in trying to adjust it to the correct positioning. But popping out these wee sections there means that they can be used as locators when you put the deck down. And even though it's very sticky on the back, it almost immediately will go down to exactly the right position. So I'm now going to go around it and take out all of these wee sections. Right, we've now removed all of these uh, whole sections and I'll just get rid of this working board so you can see it better through the through the, on the black surface 
Now there are one or two areas where the, the plastic backing is still there. Uh, normally when you take the wooden section off its plastic backing, that plastic backing for example, I think in that hole there there's still plastic and in that hole there there's still plastic, will be removed with the rest of the plastic. But, I'll get my glove back on again. You will now see that it's possible to very accurately position your piece of wooden deck by using the, the protuberances on the deck as locator pins. For example, well, there's still quite, there's two come through there, there will be two come through here, and there's that box there. So it can be done. Um, it will also be easier to do when this plastic backing has come off. So what we'll do now is we'll remove the plastic backing. This is a big moment. This is where if things go wrong, they go horribly wrong. Um, but once you become accustomed to doing it, it, it's not too bad. What we're going to do is we're just going to slide the knife in there underneath the edge and lift up the plastic. And off it comes quite simply. Oops. I'm going to try not to touch this, this glue with, uh, with the rubber, with the glove, because if I do, it'll stick to the glove, and that will be the last you see of me in a, in a calm mood. That peels off like that. Now, we have to put <laughs> the deck down. We'll just try to get it as near as we can above. Right, I'm going to take this glove off because otherwise it's going to be really difficult to do. And what we have now, we have it fairly accurately positioned here. We've got a, a ventilation hatch squarely there, with two bollards there, two bollards there, two bollards there, two anchor hose pipes there, and the rest are holes. Now if I simply push that down now, it should be exactly correctly positioned. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm trying to work from the middle outwards. Just rubbing as you go because that makes sure there's no air bubbles left inside. So it's from the middle out and from the front back. And these two actions ought to ensure that you have no air bubbles left. Okay. Now, using the the flat of this pointer knife that I have, I generally just go along the deck edge and make sure that the deck is down properly, right up to the deck edge. I'm trying not to touch it with my hands because we've still got to be a wee bit aware of the, the, the finger grease situation. Now, I'm going to zoom in fairly close now. I 
I think that's as close as we're going to get and still maintain some sort of focus. So there's just a little bit there where there's a, an air bubble that's not quite lying flat so we'll push that down. That seems okay. Push it up here. In between the two bollards, yes, we're right down in the deck there. We're right down the deck here. We're right down coming up to this point where the forward anchors are. That's a ventilation hatch and we seem to be well down in the center of it. Uh, along that deck edge. Excuse me, there is a message for you. Good. Along there. Now, we seem to be all right here in between the bollards and right along the deck edge there. Now, up in the nose of the ship, we just need to be a little bit careful. And that goes right up there. Now, from looking from the back, I don't know if you'll be able to see. There seems to be not even not even a tenth of a millimetre, not even a hundredth of a millimetre overlap there. What we'll do is we'll just run over that with a piece of very fine sandpaper, just to make sure that the edges are completely flush. Turning it over. Nothing there at all, that's fine. So, it would appear from this that our four deck is now properly positioned. And the way that will sit on the ship itself, let's get the main deck over. This is the main deck. And here we have the foredeck, and that fits very conveniently up like that. And now let's zoom out and see what we're looking like. And back in again. So I'm quite pleased with that. The next section that we could do is a section of the main deck and it runs from up here and that's it there. Oh, you can't see that, can you? Let me just zoom out a bit so that you can. This is the front of it here, that's the point there, and this area will sit in here, and it goes back, right back to here. So technically we can put this piece on the main deck now. Now rather than this will take quite a while to do, so rather than have you watch me do this, I'll now do this, and we'll come back shortly and let you see how we'll get on. Okay, so, now we've put that centre section of wooden decking down, and this was actually quite a difficult section to put down because um, there are some very narrow parts in it, and when you take it, pull it off the plastic backing, the whole thing tends to twist around these very narrow sections there um, and it was quite a job to get it on but it is on now um, it's in, it's on correctly as far as I can see the only issue that I had with it was up at the front here near the breakwater where there is wood that goes in between the struts the breakwater struts I've got it in as well as I can at the moment um, I'll probably need to fiddle with it a little bit more, but apart from that, I'm quite happy with it. Just notice one wee point there that's not been quite finished off properly. Um, I'll put this bollard here. It's not bad, it's not bad. <sighs> a little bit of wooden deck away, out the road, that's it. <coughs> Now 
Right, oops, two bits I forgot to take off. When you put it down, any of the, the, the parts that are um, supposed to come out as you push it down and that but that you haven't taken out already end up sitting on top of these boxes or, or hatch covers or whatever they are and have to be removed like that and it's partner on the other side there we go That's right. You'll also need to make sure that, that where there's a hole in the deck, the holes line up. And indeed they do. So that's making sure that I have got this in the right place. One, two, three. And there's a little bit of wooden deck still on top of that hole. You really want to try and avoid, oh dear, try and avoid pushing the, the wood down into the hole because if you do, the part that's supposed to go in thereafter may not go down. However, okay, and whatever the bow is, the bow that we did earlier will fit on there. So, that's the bow done, that's the centre deck mostly done, the, the stern, the, the quarter deck if you like, which fits on here like that, has a section of deck that runs from there right up to where it meets this deck here. So this will have to be fitted into the hull first before we fit that last section of deck on. Just keep going as you, as you spot little things, just pop back to them and make sure that they're fitting properly. You'll notice that there's a gap between the edge of the deck, the wooden deck there, and this moulded section which is where um, the upper works start to go on. That's to allow the walls of the upper works to sit flush. So that gap there is to allow the plastic walls, I uh, assume this is it, it you know, the, the ones that fit in there like that. So there should be a gap running all the way around the here and all the way around here and indeed there is. So I'm quite happy with that so far. Uh, that'll do for just now. I'll um, come back when we're looking at fitting the deck into the hull. Well the first thing to do is to clean out the groove in the decks uh, before we, uh, the groove in the hull, sorry, before we fit the decks in. This has got the black paint and PVA mix in it and we just clean it out with a knife to make sure the decks settle into the groove properly. We then fit the three decks into the hull and secure the stern with a couple of elastic bands because we're going to start from the stern and work forward. When, we've sat, when we're satisfied with the position of the stern we can glue it in just with a spot of glue right at the point of the stern to fix it in position and then run round the edges with Tamiya's extra thin cement to settle the stern into its final position. We then do the same with the centre deck, fixing it first of all with elastic bands, checking its position is accurate and then running Tamiya's extra thin round the edges to firmly glue the centre deck in position and then we move on to the bow. No. This is the last part of adding the decks on to the Prince Eugen. The last piece of deck that we have to put on now is the bow. We've taken a lot of time with this middle section and uh, as you've seen I've used extra thin building it up making sure that this middle section is exactly positioned so that when we put the bow section in like that it will fit exactly where it's supposed to because the very last thing we wanted was an overlap here or a space here um, once this had been put in place so we now come to the very last part which is fitting the bow there is 
just a little bit of tidying up I want to do right in the very point of the bow so we'll get one of our files and just quite gently just round off the bow there and make sure that there's no wee bits of flashing that are going to interfere with the final fit and we just do it quite gently like that the other thing you'll notice is that we've cleaned up this groove and the same on this side um, from any of this uh, PVA black paint mix that we've used to pick out the, the portholes there was quite a splash in here and we just took um, the knife and cleaned it out so that there's nothing going to interfere with the glue between this part the, bow, the final bow section and it fitting up here now as I said we used Tamiya's Extra Thin for this part because I wanted to make sure that it was held firmly in place and then we just started with little spots holding parts down making sure that the hull was spread so that the, the deck actually did fit into the groove and wasn't sitting on top and we've now got it accurately positioned and the last part to do is this but because this now fits so well I'm not going to have to use the extra thin I'm instead going to use just an ordinary humble poly cement and we'll run that along the groove until we've got cement in there now with this you just have to wait a bit until it appears at the nozzle and we run it along This of course is quite a bit thicker than, than Tamiya's Extra Thin and because of that it gives you a little bit of extra time to work with it. But you must always remember to put, well I put a pin down that nozzle to make sure that it doesn't set in the nozzle. And we just drop the deck into place, push it in, making sure it's sitting in the groove and not on top. And then the last thing is we'll just take a, a couple of elastic bands just to secure it and we'll just locate that in. Yep. And we'll put another small one right in the bow just to make sure that it's held in properly and stays held in. There we go. Right, we'll give that time to set now. Now because we've done this, I'll just pan it back out a little bit for you. Because we've done this now, you can see all my other bits and pieces coming into sight, um, we will then be able to put the final piece of Artwalk's deck, because it goes from right at the point of the stern there, to meet up with this section here. And you'll remember that the middle deck itself joined to the stern deck here, so we had to wait until the decks were put in position before we put this last piece of Artwalk's deck on and we'll probably just give that these joins there and there just a little touch of the file it doesn't matter about the appearance of the plastic because the deck will be on top of it but I want to make that a fairly smooth joint there and there so we'll give this a chance to dry and then we'll come back and work on the last bit of the deck there Well, that's uh, the situation that we've reached now, um, so far as the Prinzoigen is concerned. The deck as it stands still has quite a lot of work to be done to it. There are quite a few um, parts to be fitted to it. Uh, for example, we've got uh, two sets of torpedo tubes per side. We've got a hundred and We've got a 10.5 centimeter mounting to go on each side. We have capstans here and here, 40 millimeter mountings there and there, there and there, and there's a couple of others, especially towards the stern here. There's anchor chains fore and aft. 
there's quite a bit of photo etch work to be done on these hatches and uh, boxes. There are also winches to go in here. At the front, there's quite a bit of um, photo etch work to be done around the front end of the superstructure. Uh, we've got a hatch there, more hatches here. So there's quite a bit of work to be done on the deck itself. There's also um, brass railings to go right around the whole deck structure. Now I don't want to do anything about that yet. I want to start working on the superstructure itself. And the reason is that as you work in the superstructure, or as I work in the superstructure, you're on constantly leaning across the sides of the deck. And if you've got very delicate parts there, it is so easy to knock them off when you're working on the superstructure. Um, and so I think that what I'll do is I'll start working on the superstructure and leave a lot of the parts on the deck alone. We will have an episode where we look distinctly at fitting out what should go on the deck. But in the meantime, I think we'll move on. And over here, I have the next level of deck. Um, and that fits on very roughly like that. Uh, there will be a lot of wooden decking to be put on top of this and also the sides have to be built up. But that's the next level that I'm wanting to work on. This deck has been given two coats of Johnson's Clear. Um, that is to enable me to put uh, the swastika on here, which was used for aircraft recognition. It will slide very easily onto this now that there's a couple of coats of clear on it, whereas it would have been quite difficult to get it settled properly just on a plain deck. And then once that's on, and also all the bits and pieces that have to go on the deck, we'll give it a coat of matte UV varnish. But in the meantime, I want to have a look at how we're going to handle this piece of superstructure and we've got also all the sections to go between that rise up here. So that'll do for just now and when we come back we'll have a look at the superstructure. Well that's finished part six of the Prince Eugen build uh, and we now at long last have got the decks finished. Um, we're not going to put on any of the photo etch parts yet. I had intended to, but the more I thought about it as we went along, the more I realised that we were leaving ourselves open to damaging much of the photo etch. Because as we start to work on the superstructure, we're always leaning across the railings and all the photo etch parts that we would need to put on, and they're quite delicate, so it could lead to some damage. So I've decided not to do the photo etch work on the deck yet. We will do it, we will do it later, um, at an appropriate time, which basically means that when we can get it done without damaging it. So now we're going to move on to the next part, uh, and in part seven we're going to start working on the superstructure of the Prince Eugen. So I look forward to seeing you for part seven. <laughs>